Hey, good evening. It's Monday, May 13th, and welcome back to Everyday Talk 24-7. Such an honor to start the week with you again. We're going to continue looking at whether we are following the path of wisdom or following the path of tradition. And tonight I want to make specific application to why we read the Bible. Are you reading the Bible to gain wisdom? Which I think we would probably say, but in practice, are we? Or are we reading the Bible because we're following the traditions of people, of men? And that's an important distinction for us to make. Isaiah makes that distinction in Isaiah 29. Jesus quotes that very passage in both Matthew and Mark's Gospel and warns us not to follow the traditions of men. Listen to what Isaiah says. Isaiah 29, verse 13. The Lord says, and again, he's condemning people in the southern kingdom for the way that they have trusted God's word or not trusted it. These people come near to me with their mouth and honor me with their lips, but their hearts are far from me. What he's saying here is they're going through the elaborate motions of religion, of thinking they can please God by their outward actions which is what the Pharisees did and what was wrong with them. So they come near to God, they say all these wonderful words, they honor him with their lips, their mouths are talking about how great God is, but their hearts are far far from me. The inner person is not there. They're going through rote, they're going through ritual. They're doing this because they think this will make them acceptable to God, which it won't. So then he says, Isaiah, their worship of me is made up of rules taught by men. Things that we just follow along because people tell us, because the pastor told me, because some group told me, because I read if I do these many things in this kind of way, it will make me acceptable before God. That's what he's warning against. Don't fall into that trap. Wisdom, remember the wisdom as we've been talking about in chapter 4, Proverbs says, whatever you do, get wisdom. Even though it costs you everything you have, get wisdom. In chapter 3 of Proverbs it says, wisdom, she is more valuable than anything you can desire. That's why we want to read the Bible. So that we can find life. So that we can latch on to whatever is important in this world, things that God says are important. We want to read to gain wisdom, not to gain acceptance of people, not to read so many verses at a time, so I say I've read X number of verses, not to read to show others how much I've been reading how spiritual I am, and certainly we don't want to read to impress God. All those things have to do with the traditions of men. You need to read as slowly as as is necessary, where you gain wisdom, where you are, remember, our definition of wisdom here is applying the truth of God to life. So you want to be able to read a passage of scripture and apply it to your life. That's wisdom. If you're just going through the motions, if you're just saying, I've read this many verses, this many chapters, I've read this reading plan, but it's not impacting you with wisdom, so you're applying it to your life, then that is the traditions of men. It's not going to be valuable to you. We need to know what we're reading. Hey, Echo. Glad you decided to say hello tonight. Good girl. Good. You haven't been around in a while, but anyway, this is my cat, Echo, if you uh, haven't seen her before. Uh, she's often around and sometimes creates havoc here, but really good to see her tonight. So, we want to know what you're reading so we can gain wisdom. Because these words are our life, just as Deuteronomy says. There's seven genres, there's seven different types of literature in the Bible. And you need to know where you are in the Bible, which of these these types, these genres apply. There's seven. Some people will complain or whatever, but I think there's seven, and here they are. History, narrative, that's one. Law is two. 
Three is wisdom and poetry. Four would be prophecy. Five would be the Gospels. Six would be the Epistles. And seven would be the apocalyptic literature, like places like Ezekiel, Daniel, and Revelation. Those are seven distinct forms of literary genre that we need to know what we're reading. You can't read Proverbs the same way you read the Gospels. You can't read history the same way you read law. We can't look at narratives the same way <laughs> that we would look at the way God gives us commands in doing things. All those are important so we can get a grasp of how I can find wisdom here, how I can take these truths and apply them to my life. And that's huge. If you have any questions about this, now I can go, in, go into this more you know, at any point if you'd like. And again, I love your... You guys can have a huge impact on what's happening here. I'll talk about what you want me to talk about. I'm honored to do that. Not just on the Q&A sessions, but anytime. If you have something you want to talk about, let me know. We'll talk about it. If you don't know about these different ways of genres, we can do that. That might be a helpful series, but let me know if that's something that appeals to you. Don't read for people. Don't read to say I read X amount. Read so that you can apply wisdom, apply the truth of God to your life so that it will change and impact your life. If that's not happening with your Bible reading, then one of the reasons that might be happening is because you're following the traditions of people. You're doing what Isaiah warns against. They worship me. Their worship is made up of rules taught by men. We don't get to God, we don't get to know God better by just consuming a vast amount of his word. We know it by consuming his word so that it impacts our life. I think you know me well enough that I'm pretty much in favor of really getting into God's Word deeply. But don't be pushed along by the traditions of men. Anyway, do you read to gain wisdom, or do you read out of tradition? It's an important question to ask. And I'd love your thoughts and interaction on this. Again, great to have you along tonight. Thank you so much for uh, just being here. And Lord willing, we'll see you tomorrow. You have a good evening. Bye-bye.